the 1970 Chevrolet Chevy Impala coming up next. Hello once again model car fans, are you ready for another unboxing video? Well today we're going to be taking a look at the 1970 Chevrolet Impala by AMT Ertl. Now this is one of those kits that's been reissued many times over the years and in a few minutes I will show you different box arts from this great model kit of the past. This is an amazing kit that goes together pretty easy, skill level 2. Great for young kids moving on from snap togethers into more sophisticated model cars, of course. And we're going to open up this this uh, box and take a look at it in this video. We're not going to open the video and take a look at it in this box, which is what I was about to say. But anyway, if you love these great uh, unboxing videos, don't forget to check out our older videos on this channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Pound that notification bell because every week there's a new one of these coming out. So you want to be the first one to see it, right? So pound that notification bell. And now without further ado, let's go down to our Chevy showroom. But first, let's take a look at those older box arts. And now we wind our clock all the way back to 1970, where we get to see the amazing 1970 Chevy Impala. And this is a B-bodied car, which of course shares the same platform as the Chevy Biscayne, the Bel Air, the Impala, the Caprice, the Pontiac Catalina, Broham, Bonneville, Granville, the Oldsmobile Delta 88, Delta 88 Royale, Delta 88 Cruiser, the Buick LeSabre, LeSabre Custom Estate Wagon Centurion, and if you're in Canada, the Pontiac Laurentian and Parisian Brome. All right, so now I can put this away. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so here's our 1970 Chevy Impala. And this kit has been out on the market a few times and continues to be out a few times. This is, of course, an earlier edition of this kit. Well, not too early, sort of late early, I don't know. This, of course, is an RC2 kit. So here we have our Chevy engine in there, our dashboard and interior, and the side view of this car. You know, I do believe I had a neighbor with a Chevy Impala. I don't remember quite the year, but I know it was this red. So it's got the cool um, uh, wheel covers on there. Now these wheel covers are, were also used on the 1970 Chevy Corvette. This is 2003 edition by R.C. Ertl. And uh, again, the same kind of pictures. There's the back three quarter view. This is skill level two kit for ages 10 and up. Glue and paint required. Now I've built two of these back in the past. And of course I will build this one in the future. We can take a look at those at the end of this video. Lifting off the lid of our car, you can see with your eye bulbs that we have our big instruction sheet. This one says I bought it at Phoenix Comics, which is in Calgary, for $16.50 on June 22nd, 2003. So I've had this for a while. Here is our decal sheet. Let's keep this covered. Give you some suspense, something to look forward to at the end of the video, other than the credits of me saying goodbye. <laughs> okay, there's our interior bucket, our chassis, up and down. Forward and back, left and right. There's our Chevy body. Now these B bodies were pretty much the largest cars GM had. Well, yeah, pretty much. More mid-range big. There is larger, of course. So there's our differential and everything. Dashboard and steering wheel, not in a little baggie. Amazing! Rare! Okay. There is the firewall and the rad support, as well as the engine components. You do have a choice of, I do believe, no, maybe not. Maybe they're front and rear springs. We'll see as we go along. 
nice solid hood in here. The body panels on this kit are pretty solid. It's got custom bits as well. And the big chopped sunken in bit for cutting out for your velocity stacks, which go through the hood in this kit, if I remember correctly. Don't think it had a blower. We will see, we will see. There's our engine and seat backs and more rolled pans and whatnot. Glass nicely placed in a bag so it doesn't get scratched or tire burnt. Let's try to find an example of tire burnt glass. I know I got some. There's our custom components. You do get a lot of chrome in here. Yep, there's those velocity stacks. We'll see when we take a look at our chrome. And then the gigantic chrome sprue goes from one end of the box to the other and includes more custom wheels. So you actually have three choices of custom wheels in this kit, as well as the stock uh, hubcaps, which again were on the Corvette. I do believe I bought this kit to pirate these into a 70 Corvette, in case you're wondering. And then what else is in the bag here? Box. There's our lower A arms and a sway bar. And then if you're feeling tired, here's some tires. <laughs> you do get a choice of stock or custom. Looks like the old vintage Firestones in here from like 1930s model cars, as well as those GM, sorry, not GM, Goodyear Polyglass GTs. So what I'll do is I'll clear all this stuff out of the way, and then we'll start looking at our instruction sheet. And here we have our great big 1970s Chevy Impala, drawing by Randy, Randy Quaid. No, I don't know. Randy, who drew this stuff for AMT. Anyway, here we go. And you can see this is a nice, cool car from the 70s. Big monster mobile. And I know a lot of people had these back in the day. If you're one of them, let us know in the comments down below. So we'll just back this up a bit, quite a bit. And now you can see just how big these instructions are. This, of course, is the mega sheet. Can't even fit in the camera lens, even if I go this way. It's huge. Okay, so we'll just let's just zoom back in here. I have to do this panel by panel, of course. So here we have the history of the Chevy 70 Impala. If you got a bit of time, let's just read it. Hey, I never get to read these things. Chevy ushered in a new decade of the 70s with a refinement of the classic American full-size car. This was, of course, a Chevrolet Impala. Big, sleek, and with a variety of engine options, very powerful. Built on a strong box section frame with a body by Fisher, the Impala was a flagship of the Chevrolet line. Of course, the sporty two-door hardtop was the car of choice for the younger buyer. Options were the name of the game, making it quite possible to custom order an Impala unlike any other, just by checking the right box on the order sheet. The sleek lines of the Impala did not escape the eye of the customizer, and many ended up in the show circuit, all polished chrome and custom paint. The Impala is also a favorite of those who like lowriders, cars that sit mere inches from the pavement and cruise down the boulevard for all the world to see. Covered in deep metallic paints, equipped with hydraulic jacks for taking a bow, and sporting full custom interiors, the lowrider is a unique form of auto art. Any way you wish to build it, the Impala shines as a beautiful car and model kit. Lowrider. Drive a little slower. And now we have it in French, so here we go. Historia del Chevy Impala. No, anyway. Actually, is this in Spanish? I think that might be Spanish. Yeah, in Spanish. There we go, true lowrider fashion here. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> and then we have our little bit at the end about how to do all that stuff. So now let's open this thing up and see all the Impala goodness. You know, that is really interesting that this is printed in Spanish and ended up in Canada because we're, you know, under Canadian law, it's supposed to be French and English. So that is cool. Anyway, here we have our stock tires and the stock wheels, which look nice, I must admit. I do admit. And then we have this chrome interior rim. So you pop your, tire, your wheel through your tire and then put the rim on the back. And then for our custom here, we have the Goodyear Polyglass tires going on there. And then the American Racing Mag 
going in with the sunken in rims. And then on our low rider, we have the Firestone stock tire with the sunken in inner rim. It's kind of weird. But then we have these Krager mags with these very long ends sticking out. So you'd pop all that into there. Now I know, of course, uh, what I would do is, before you glue this together, put these two into the stock tire and see if it's not sticking way out. If it is, you might want to pop this apart again and use those Goodyear poly glasses in here and here. But I haven't really used the custom wheels so much, so if you guys know anything about those and used them in your models before, let us know in the comments if you actually have to use this Goodyear big tire instead of the Firestone that they call out for. Next up we have our basic engine assembly. So our block, of course, includes the transmission here with a standard manual shift transmission. Let's glue those two together and then put on your cylinder heads and your front timing chain cover with water pump and then put your oil pan up underneath and then come down here and put your starter on there, paint it flat black. It does have the paint color callouts on here, in case you need to know. Uh, engine should be Chevy engine red, it does not say though. Okay, then you have your fan belt and pulleys. There's a little idler here. And then here we have a alternator and then our five blade fan going on. Now once you have your basic engine together, you can have the choice here to either build it stock or custom. So here we have our valve covers going on, which are chromed. There is a breather cap. And then we have our exhaust manifolds going on there. So it says to paint them black. You could also paint these aluminum, I do believe. I could be mistaken. Anyway, there's our intake manifold, goes all on. And then down here we have this gigantic chrome air cleaner, which is really nice. Just too bad it doesn't have the decal going on there. Maybe it does later, we'll see. There's our carburetor, our coil coming out, as well as our distributor. And that will complete that big giant Chevy big block. So this kit is quite the treat because we actually have three engines in here. We have the stock one we just saw, and now we have a drag racing style of motor with, of course, these big velocity stacks going on. So you want your uh, chrome valve covers. Now, these ones are not the stock ones. These are actually custom. And then here we have the fuel injection manifold, the headers and header collectors popping on the sides. And then down here we have our coil again and distributor. And then we have these header mufflers, which will go on, one on this side and one on the other. And then these nice eight velocity stacks, which will pop up in here, one for each cylinder. It's a really cool option. And now let's take a look at our final engine. And here's our final engine assembly. This time around we have the special tricarb intake manifold, which was popular uh, intake in the 60s. And then, of course, our valve covers and the stock style exhaust manifolds going on here. This, of course, is our custom for our lowrider car. And then we've got these nice triple air cleaners going on here, our coil and our distributor again. So there's our three choices, stock, drag, or custom. Now that we've got our engine complete, we'll go into our interior. And this kit has one of the only chain link steering wheels, which is really popular back in the 1970s in the lowrider scene. And I don't think I've seen this in any other kit. I could be mistaken though, if you know of another chain steering wheel, Please let us know in the links down below. Now remember these, <laughs> you can make these in auto body or in uh, welding class at school. You take a, a chain and you uh, take a board of wood and you draw a circle on the board of wood to the size of the steering wheel, right? And then what you would do is put a link of chain around or you would nail nails into the circle like around the edge of the circle, and then you would lay your chain in there and then start welding up each piece bzz, 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 with the welder until it made a chain welded circle. And then I think you take a regular steering wheel and you cut off the rim and then you put the spokes on the steering wheel and weld it in place, or maybe not a regular steering wheel, but something like that. Anyway, chain links. Instrument panel, you get a nice dashboard in here. You get only the bench seat and then the back, but if you're in a low rider in that, you know, you don't really need bucket seats. The nice interior bucket is really padded. These bigger cars in the 70s had a lot of plushy interior, of course. And our gear shift in here. And a lot of room. Really wide cars. So that's our interior assembly. Panel 7 begins our front suspension assembly. 
And it's kind of basic. You can make this posable steering if you put some tie rods and whatnot in here. You do get two options for the king pins. You get the stock style, which has a pin basically in the center, or the lowering king pin, which has it at the top or bottom. Um, you want to have this so that the pin is sticking down here, so when you turn the car over it, it's lowered. Otherwise, if you flip this over, you will get the drag race style with the wheels sticking way up so the front end is lifted. Clear those big uh, big exhaust manifolds. So there's the lower A-frame up here, and the kingpins and the front springs go in onto our nice chassis. Next up we have our engine installation where we've got our front end done. So now we can drop our engine in here, one of the three. There is a transmission mount going across here just to lock it all in place and then hook it up to your drive shaft and then your rear springs will drop into your chassis. All parts in this area, panel, flat, black, except engine. Next up we have our exhaust assembly. So all our exhaust pipes will hook into here. These will glue onto the ends of our manifold. It says a stock exhaust, admit, omit for custom only. And well, why not for the drag race? Oh yeah, because this doesn't tell you it's drag race. So here you have an uh, option of your resonators on here, or you can put on these chrome twin pipes with the extension sticking out on your custom or lowrider. So again, quite simple, quite nice. Finally, once all the components are in, you can drop in your rear suspension, the differential with these trailing arms, as well as the shock absorbers and this little sway bar in here. So the sway bar can be a little bit finicky to get in, but it's not really that hard. It is nice that you get a fully detailed undercarriage with all the individual suspension components. may not be the best undercarriage that uh, AMT ever made for these models, but it's far better than the single molded pan with everything stuck underneath it that you have to try to paint and you've got these you know rectangular deep exhaust pipes that aren't round and, and you know all that. So again, very nicely done for a vintage kit. So here I thought it might be better to look at assembly 11 and 12 both together. So this is where you're going to put your wheels onto your king pins, your battery onto the radiator wall and support, and then your hose into your engine and this onto the chassis on this little line here. Now for our body, we have the firewall popping in from underneath. You have to remove the cross braces in the front and file them up and make them nice and clean. And then you can insert your windshield up in here. Some possible body colors are silver, black, glacier blue, burgundy, white, and saddle. But of course you might want to check out what was happening for paint in 1970. Next up we have a basic installation. Here is our body with the assembled glass and firewall and our interior popping into place. And here we can do another two panels at the same time. So here we have the stock and custom final assembly. Now you can put your hood in here and it says remove shaded area for custom. There's, it doesn't really show you here, but there's that little sunken in square we saw uh, with our body pieces. Um, there's our stock grill, we'll glue right in. Now this one doesn't have separately molded headlights, which is kind of nice. They are chrome, so you'll have to add a little bit of a wash in here just to sort of make them look like lights, maybe a very light blue wash. Okay, so then we've got our stock bumper and we've got our rear red tail lights. The center one should be white, has a backup marker light, and then a little bit of a rolled pan that glues up under the bumper. Next up we have the two panels for the lowrider final assembly with the custom grill going in here with the front rolled pan and our CB headlights, which are like rectangular. Now, I do believe George Barris had a hand in this front end back in the day, as well as the custom pieces on here, because George Barris did a lot of work for AMT and whatnot throughout the years. Um, there's the window overlay to make that custom. And then our rear bumper here with the long tail lights and tail lamps, as well as the rolled pan. So this is a lot cool. Tail light center red clear, tail lights clear red. Now I've never used these lowrider parts, but maybe on this kit I might actually use it. And our final panel here is the decal panel. And it shows these nice ones going on the side, as well as just some regular scripts and whatnot 
going on here. Well, well, we'll take a look at what these are when we see our decal sheet at the end, so stay tuned for that. And that will conclude our look at the instruction sheet for our 1970 Chevrolet Impala. And here we have our 70 Chevy Impala body, and it's quite a cool one. It's got that reversed window in here. Uh, nice huge trunk on these cars. Put a lot of stuff in there. Now, here and here we have these braces which must be removed. These, of course, are helping the in the mold process so the front end doesn't wrinkle all up when the guys pull it off of the mold. Uh, nice detail on this. I always like this kit. I've built a couple of them, as I said before. You do get the typical body panels for the Impala, the door handles, the marker lamps, very popular in the 60s, as you can see on those Chevy Chevelles in the earlier videos. We do have the lights going down here. Actually, for 1970, I guess. Side marker lights have been straight up and down there. Impala, Impala. You know you got an Impala. <laughs> Chevrolet across the trunk lid and the sunken in bit for your key. Yeah, well, since it fell over, let's look underneath here. There are some mold marks under the roof. Of course, we've got pins for alignment. Um, there's little grooves in there for our supports. There isn't one for the firewall. There's a bit of a long mold line in here. Whoops. There, how can I show this? Maybe like that. You can see that there. I don't think that's going to affect anything, but it is kind of weird. It's always something weird on the inside of these kits. <laughs> Again, looks very nice. You could uh, make this into like a police cruiser as well. All kinds of different things. And next up, we'll just take a look at our interior chassis here. And as you can see, there are some mold marks that are pretty high across the back panel, which you could easily sand down. This little bit, of course, actually a lot of this is hidden, but you'd want to clear it just to make it flush. Now, as you can see, this panel will go up through the window, which is kind of nice because this little bit continues on that body panel that's here in the trunk area. That's, of course, is a rear package shelf. The seat detail in here is very nicely done. The side panels look good, even though this is a tub. So, of course, you're not going to get the nice GM window cranks in there like this, which you would if it was separate panels. Now, down in, on the floor pan, out in the street, Willie and the homeboys see some mold marks. So grab your number 16 hobby blade and scrape it to the beat. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's the pedals. So this is an automatic, which we're going to take a look at that uh, transmission again. Um, so you got your brake pedal here, parking brake, and your regular brake, and then your gas pedal. We got a flat console going on there. Little uh, uh, rectangular tabs here just to lock in that front bench seat. Underneath, nice and smooth. Again, a very nicely well done interior tub. And finally, for our simple details, we have our chassis underneath here, which of course is a very flat pan. There is the the brace for our radiator support wall. Now unfortunately there aren't any wires going up on these inner wheel aprons, but there are some mold marks in here which you might want to scrape out. Pardon me. And then underneath here is where all the detail is. And it is a nice frame, although it could use that bar that goes across this way. Uh, maybe a little simplified. And there should be one across the front here too. But at any rate, you got a full perimeter frame here. Um, not sure what these little dash marks are. Maybe welds. Let's see here. You can see them there. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> That's where you know where you've been. <laughs> anyway, they've got the uh, brake lines going in here into the rear axle. There's our gas tank. Overall, I mean, it's not very uh, too bad of a mold job. I think it's quite nice, actually. So let's take a look at the other gray components. And here we have all our gray components. Hooray! I can put them all in one frame. Isn't that nice? So there's our front bench seat, our 
custom manif or exhaust pipes, I guess mufflers and whatnot. There's that sunken in custom window, battery, those little things, <laughs> yet to remain unknown. Um, there's our front roll pan for the lowrider, our gigantic Chevrolet Impella hood. There's our exhaust pipes, and here are those little rear tail muffler things. Resonators, I do believe it was called. There's our rear differential, quite a big one. Not sure the ratio on this, what it's meant to be. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, this would be the biggest axle for the big heavy GMs. There's our firewall, and or sorry, our radiator support. Here's our firewall here. The blower installed, as well as the master cylinder, which is a little short. It's just a little knobby, blobby thing. Um, you might be able to find one somewhere online or whatever, a resin copy or one from another kit. There's those springs, the shock absorbers. There's our kingpins there. Oh, I wonder if that... Yeah, that's what these are here. The uh, lowered kingpins. Yep. Exacto mundo. Okay. So we've got our kingpins in here. The firewall. There's our engine block components, which would be the um, cylinder heads. Pardon me. There's our... In, uh, exhaust manifolds and the intake manifold. Hooray, I get a prize. I got that right. Okay, and then there's our front suspension components and that little sway bar. The steering wheel and dashboard. The rear uh, pans. That's a rolled pan. This is one that goes in the stock under the bumper. There's the back of our bench seat there and our big Chevy engine block with a standard transmission, even though we've got the automatic paddles again. Or pedals in the dash in the hmm, interior bucket okay so very basic looking so um, let's bring some of these up to the camera gonna start one at a time here okay so here is the Chevy hood and you can see the nice intakes now these are sort of those years where they start to bring the hood up to the edge of the windshield instead of having that panel across the front of the car and the hood being back here. Give it a sleeker appearance. There we've got our bracing underneath as well as some old marks which you gotta get rid of with that number 16 hobby blade. These are the lowered king pins in here for a lowrider or turn them upside down and make a dragster out of it with the front wheels sticking way up off the ground. There's our nice pleated bench seat. Looks good. Actually if you're gonna build a dragster I would Go in your parts box and see if you can find a bucket seat for it. And make your own roll bar. Or use one from like the 40 Ford from AMT or something. Cut it down so it doesn't punch through the roof. It's a tall one. It's a sunken in bits in the front end. You can put a little flat black in here. Or drill through. Open it up. Or dremel it down from the back. Whatever your choice is. There's that component. So just set that off here. There's that differential. You can see it's pretty smoothed out. Um, and of course our exhaust pipes on there, as well as those resonators. Nice detail on them. There's that brace for the transmission, which has a mold mark under there, so you got to file that down. Some mold marks on the undersides of these mufflers. You might not see them, but they might interfere with the gluing. Same with the resonators and on those braces there. So, a bit of work to do. <laughs> There's our um, rad support, and you can see all the wires hanging off of it. Look kind of helter-skelter under there. Helter-skelter. Okay, and the blower and all the bits and pieces. Of course, our manifolds there. Turning it over, you can see some old marks and numbers. A little bit of flash in here. Flash in the pan. Sand all this down on here and paint it all black so you don't see it under the hood. Uh, what else? There's our little A-arms there. You can see the nice detail on them. As well as that front brace. A few mold marks on the other side here. There, there, and there. I think those will interfere with something, so sand them flat. Our instrument panel, you can see the nice work they did to make this look like a proper Chevy Impala. There is a sunken in bit here, which should say Impala as well. You can pick out the letters with your very fine paintbrush. Or even some of those Sharpie things might be able to squeeze in there. 
and of course our Impala steering wheel. Then our final gray piece here is our engine. Now unfortunately there's not much going on in this window here. There's supposed to be a whole bunch of things sticking out of it. Shifter uh, bits and pieces. Again, right engine, wrong transmission for the car. Should be automatic. And uh, the rest of the detail, oops, pretty straightforward. Mold marks across the back, which need to be cleaned up. Okay, so that will give us our look at all our gray components. See if I can line this up in frame again, as it were. And there you go, there's our gray pieces for our Chevy Impala. And here we have our two chrome trees. Now we're going to look at the first one first, followed up by the second one second. So I'll just move the second one out of the way here for now. And we'll center this and zoom in. Okay, maybe a little too close. Back it up. Alright, so here we have our front grille for the custom version. You can see a nice inner panel here, which you could, of course, put a little bit of that flat black wash in there. Some Nuln Oil from Citadel. There's our front stock grill again with uh, you can put in your null oil in there. The front turn signal lamps or parking lights even. And then of course we have our headlights in here. Actually they would be turn signal parking lights. There's our, our uh, stock wheel covers which you could use on your Corvette. It's the same year. And then our rear bumper and the center one here will be white. And then of course our reds will be on the edges. The custom intake manifold, maybe even the stock one. That we'll see in a minute. Uh, a shifter, our carburetor, little bits and pieces here, nice custom bits. Uh, triple carbs, this of course would be your alternator. There's the chrome fan, your choice of valve covers, and the rear custom panel and our American racing wheels and one of the retainer rings. So let's just bring this up into the lens here. You can see the nice detail on that stock grill. And I love those wire wheels. Spokes, I guess, spoked wheels. Usually wire wheels crisscross. So anyway, there's our American mags. There's the front end and the back panel for custom. This, of course, here would have that big red taillight going all the way across, and then more red taillights on the edges. Again, nice work on the valve covers. Air cleaner. It's a proper paper element in there. Turning it over, of course, there's mold marks and numbers underneath here. Scrape them all off, paint it flat black so you don't see it through your hood. Ah, there it is. The Velocity Stack Intake Manifold. Hooray! Looks great. <laughs> Okay, so that is the chrome piece number one. So let's take a look at chrome sprue numero two. Now here we have our secondary chrome component with our Krager mag wheels here. And there's all our velocity stacks. And then the remainder of our retaining rings for our wheels. Uh, there's the collectors for these headers here, all chrome and our tricarb manifold. So let's take a look at these up front. As you can see those nice Krager wheels. Looking good. A lot of nice stuff. These velocity stacks are really tall. I do believe these are our tailpipe extensions down here. Very nice work. Very excellent. Excellent, Mr. Renfield. Okay, so we do get a lot of cool components there that you can use for a dragster or custom or whatever your choice may be. And here's our Chevrolet glass, which is typical of a 1970s style glass component. We, of course, have these long runners going from our front and rear glass just to keep everything all in alignment. There are those nice CB style uh, front lights for the custom. And then here in the back we have the red tail lights and the extended long tail lights. Oh, these are the red stock tail lights. And these are the custom ones. So again, the glass is fairly simplistic. I would saw these off here and here and glue the glass in separately instead of having these runners going up through your headliner panel. 
inside your car. But if you do want them up in your headliner panel, I would suggest scraping all this off, sanding it down with your hobby blade and your sandpaper. The lights look nice. They have a sort of a, uh, what would you call that? Like how the glass is in a lighthouse sort of style to it. The center and then it radiates outwards, if you know what I mean. Know what I mean, Vern? Okay, and then there's our tail lights there, which will look nice going into that chrome bumper. So now let's take a look at our tires. And here we have our sets of tires. So these are the stock tires. They're the old generic Firestone tires, which were popular in a lot of the AMT32 to about 1950 Ford model kits, and even beyond that. And then here we have our Goodyear Polyglass GT tires, which are, of course, the 60s and 70s favorite tire from AMT. Now, these ones have the web cut out of the center, which is quite nice. And you can see that excellent tread pattern in here. Now I've got, we have a steel metal axle. I do believe this one is chrome plated. Not 100% sure on that, but it's always good to have the metal axle. That, of course, is for the rear. You can see the Goodyear script on the side here. And then our Firestones, of course, have the tread pattern that wraps all the way around. These are bias tires, of course, being like the 1930s style. And these ones were polyglass bias belted tires. So not quite the radial, but almost as good. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, of course, is the decal sheet reveal. So let's just slide our paper off here and see just how cool these decals are. Now here we get these nice scallops, which are, of course, contoured into the front fenders, which look really cool. And then here we have a nice set of pinstripes going on here. Someone phone Van Dutch. <laughs> anyway, now here we have a Texas bow tie license plate and a South Carolina 70 Chevy license plate, which is quite good because we don't get too many from South Carolina or from Texas. However, here they are right on this model kit just for you. Here's my 1970 Chevy Impala that I built way back in around grade 8 or 9. A friend and I were going to race this down a hill, drag race each other. He had a model of a 57 Chevy Gasser, but it never happened. He never got his model finished. Of course, I finished mine in about a week back then. The copper paint on here has been touched too many times. It was pretty soft, so it kind of went brown on us. Um, I had to fix the taillights because they all fell off when I went to grab this thing. Um, to clean it up for the demo. This is, of course, a Romanian roundel from World War I or II. It's actually, I do believe the colors are reversed, but I didn't know at the time. Didn't have as much history on Romania. Now, my dad and I worked on this thing, and one thing we did was give this thing an action-based rear axle. So there's actual uh, pen springs in here, just to give it some bounce. So when it went down that mountain, <laughs> or the hill, it would uh, bounce over some little obstacles and things. Anyway, I'll show you the engine in just a minute here. Here's my second 1970 Chevy Impala. This one I painted when I was in Denmark, and uh, it's a metallic gold, but this gold was sort of a hot paint, like a lacquer base and it kind of etched the plastic quite a bit. But still, I did the best I could. It's gold with a gold interior. And anyway, there it is. And that completes our look at the 1970 Chevy Impala by AMT Ertl under the RC2 label. Now, if you've built this car in the past or have built the new release of this kit, let us know how you liked it down in the comment section below. If you liked my models, of course, I don't mind a little praise here and there. I hardly get any in my life. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, let us know how it all works. And if you want to share your model kits, don't forget to check it out at our Facebook page. And I'll leave the link for that in the comment section down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great review of the AMT Ertl 1970 Chevrolet Impala. This is a great gigantic car, of course, 
And if you ever owned one, let us know down in the comments section down below what kind of engine did you have in it. I know there was a straight six for this thing. And of course the big massive V8s all through the chain. This of course being one of Chevrolet's big cars. Anyway, if you've built this model kit in the past, why not share it over on our Facebook page? I'll leave a comment down below in the links. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you get to see it first. Now, this model kit is, of course, mine, so I'm not selling it, but there are some great model kits over at www.monster-hobbies.ca, which are currently for sale at our store. Check them out on our model car page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.